Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial and also my first Tivoli automation video. My name is Frederick and I will in the next couple of videos demonstrate the new Omnibus 7.4 HTTP interface by creating this simple event dashboard from scratch. I'm splitting this tutorial up into four videos. In this video, the first part, I will go through the basics of the HTTP interface and create the dashboard layout that we will use in the second video, where I'm also connecting the dashboard to the HTTP interface and present the event data. The third video will be about moving the dashboard to an external server. I assume if you're creating larger dashboards and uh, applications using this interface, you don't want them on the actual object server for performance reasons. If you're using an external web server for your application or dashboard, you will face some problems caused by the cross-domain policy in your browser. I will demonstrate the problem and show you a way to work around it using a small proxy written in PHP. And just for the fun, in the last video I will show how the same dashboard can be created if you're still using Onbus 7.3. This dashboard will look the same but will be hosted on the Netcool Impact server under Impact Operator Views. As you see, the dashboard will have events grouped in boxes. The metric for the groups will be the total number of events based on the tally field. And to keep it uh, simple and easy for you to replicate, I will be using the Simnet probe that's included and installed with Omnibus. I have the Simnet probe running, so let's take a look at the event list together with the dashboard. We see that the node field in this implementation contains uh, some kind of location. I will use this field to group the events in the dashboard boxes. The dashboard will show event group by node. And for metric we will sum the tally of the events. As you can see there is also events from the node link. I will create a filter in my request to the object server to remove these so we only get the actual location and also because I want to show the syntax of the filter in the request. And as an extra feature, I will retrieve the highest severity of the aggregated events and let the boxes in the dashboard change to an appropriate color. The dashboard is written in HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but the code is really simple, so don't worry if you feel a bit rusty on your programming skills. Uh, it should be easy to follow anyway. Every line of code I write should be visible on your screen if you change the quality settings to Full HD in YouTube. Uh, I will also put links in the description if you prefer to download the code instead of writing it yourself. Uh, I'll try to keep uh, the code as clean as possible so you can easily extend it to your own event sources. Just to save time, I will copy and paste some of the code. Um, if you at any time fall behind, there is a pause button that will shut me up for sure while you're catching up. So, with all that out of the way, let's get started. The HTTP interface is a new feature of Omnibus 7.4 and it's something I've been really excited over because it will open up a whole new world of event presentation. I've been studying the manuals for the interface and uh, it's, it's well documented but uh, there are no real use cases in the documentation so I hope these couple of videos will give you just that. In my test environment I've installed the uh, Nobix server with uh, just the default settings. I have the Simnet probe that is included when you install this version of the object server. The Omnibus HTTP interface and the web server are disabled by default, so we need to enable them to get access. The interface is enabled by editing uh, the object server property file. It contains the following um, properties. And what you need to do is you need to change these three properties and REST OS dot enable and HTTP D enable HTTP and you need to specify a port number. After changing these properties we need to restart the object server. The interface is now enabled so let's try it out with a web browser. The location of the resource is uh, HTTP server name which in my case is uh, Omni, Omni 74 port 8080 object server slash rest API. The resource I want to look at first is uh, alerts.status. You can see that the translated name of the resource alerts.status is uh, alerts slash status. If I want to access another table like alerts.details I would write alerts slash details. I won't cover the rest protocol um, that the interface is using in this video, 
but I'll put a link in the description to a very good presentation that will explain it all. So let's see what we get when we try to access this resource. Uh, we get an authentication window. To be able to log in, we need to have an object server user. The user must have at least alerts user role in the object server. It's probably a good idea to create a dedicated user for this service, but since we're on test platform, I just go ahead with my root user. What we get from the object server is a response with the data from the resource we requested. The data is in uh, JSON format, and for just for this tutorial, just look at JSON as a way to format data structures so they can easily be exchanged between applications. As you can see, we can read the data and uh, let's just parse it manually to see what we got. When I look at the response, I can see uh, server information, what resource we requested, columns return, and the actual event data. Uh, to illustrate the response in a better way, I created a picture. Let me get that up. The object return has uh, string fields for the object server name, name on the database and the table. It also has uh, an array for column description and an array for event rows. The event row array contain objects that hold the actual event data. I will come back to this picture in the next video when we're ready to fetch data. As you can see, the data is not very presentable at this stage. It needs to be formatted in a better way, and to format the data, we need a good presentation layer. And that's where the object server file serving feature comes to your good use. It gives you access to the file system of the object server where we can create and serve HTML documents. To enable the file serving interface, we need to edit the object server property file again, and we need to change the nhttpd enable file serving to true. In save, and we have to restart the object server again. And start. There. Uh, if I open up a web browser and go to the URL of the document root, HTTP server name Omni74 port, and enter. There's a default page available so you can see that everything is working. Since I've accessed the HTTP interface in the same session, I don't get the HTTP authentication window this time. On the server side, we have the document root in the Omnihome etc rest os doc root directory. In this directory, we have the index.html file that's loaded in the web browser at the moment. Just to test it out, I'm going to change something, save it, and refresh the browser. And it seems to be the right document. So we have uh, access to the document root and are now ready to write some foundation for our dashboard. I will start by creating a new directory in the document root for a dashboard. I'm just going to call it dashboard. In this directory I create a index.html file and add some code to get started. I'm going to use div tags to create containers that I later can use for styling of the dashboard. So let's call the main container dashboard. In this container we can add some headings. For example a heading 2 with the Tivoli Netcool Omnibus 7.4 event dashboard and uh, heading 3 just the description total number of events grouped by node. And we save this and make sure it works. The URL to this page is http server name port slash dashboard. Back to the code again for some styling. I'm adding my styles directly to the HTML file. So within the head section of the code, make some room and write style type text CSS. And so I don't forget, I'll add the closing tag. I'll start by styling the document body. I want a pretty simple font, dark bluish font color, and a nice bright background color. 
me save this and verify. Yep, looks good. Uh, the headings needs to be centered and sized properly, so let's fix that. I'm still in the style section. I will reference my dashboard container and uh, then the element I want to change. In this case, heading 2, I want the text center, no margins, and a font size of uh, 25 pixels. Save and refresh. Looks good. Same procedure with the other heading. Target dashboard, heading 3. For this heading, I want some distance between the text and the monitor boxes, so I'm going to put a margin bottom of 20 pixels, text line center, and uh, font size 15 pixels. Save and refresh. Good. So let's look at the design for the boxes. All my dashboard items will be in an unordered list container. I'm going to name it dashboard items. Uh, the container will later be updated by the JavaScript with the real-time event data, but for now I just want to create some sample data to make sure I get the styling correct. To add items, I just create a list item for every monitor box in the dashboard. So list item, heading 3, and uh, in this heading I will uh, have the uh, location, so that's the node, node field. A new heading, heading 2, this will have the number of events, and then I'm just going to write a span tag to format the word events. Close tag, and close list item. If I save and look at this, it really doesn't look very good, but I'll get back to that in a minute. First I want to create some more sample data, so let's do a copy of the first item and create three more items. I'll change the location and the total events so we can see the difference. Save and refresh. Good, there we have the sample data. So let's go ahead and style the boxes. I'm starting with targeting the dashboard item container itself to remove the bullets from the list. Uh, so I put list style, none, no padding, and relative position. Save and refresh. And bullets are gone. Next I will target the list item in the dashboard container. So try to keep up now. Copy, paste. Let's try it. So now we got the boxes. Uh, what I created now was the background of the box. I will style another box that will be on top of this one. The new box will be slightly smaller, which will give us a nice border effect. I target the list item in the dashboard item container and add a before keyword. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste. Let's refresh the web page. So we have the boxes, but the text is just a mess. In our styles, uh, I'm going to target the uh, dashboard item container, uh, the list item, and then uh, heading 3, and this is our location. Uh, I need to add some margins, uh, lift, 10 pixels, 3 pixels on top, and uh, font size of 15 pixels. Just have a look at that, looks good. Uh, next. I target the item container, list item, and heading 2, and this is the number of events. Uh, I'm going to use the same margin, left 10 pixels, top 3 pixels, and a larger font, uh, I'll try 30 pixels. Save and refresh. Looks good. Uh, the events text is too large, uh, but since we had that in a span tag, I can target that one with a different style. So target dashboard item container, list item, heading to, and the span tag. Font size to 14. I'm going to make the font italic and I'm going to remove the bold text. That should be it. Save and refresh. And that looks pretty good, so I think I'm going to be happy with this design. In the next video I will connect to the object server HTTP interface. Uh, I'm going to be using a, a JavaScript to connect and fetch the data. Uh, the data is going to be replacing the code in the dashboard items container. So on every interval that we're connecting to the object server, this part is going to be replaced with live data. 
and this will be a good time to end part one. If you missed any of my coding, there is a link in the description. Also, if you have time, I would love to hear your comments, either in the comment section below or in a private message. If you're using Twitter, you can find me on the link on the screen right now. And up until next time, good luck and happy coding!